it's very easy in the museum world to use the word restoration to sum up all of the work which happens in the restoration or conservation engineering department. That's something at the Fleet Air Arm Museum as a national museum, as part of the National Museum of the Royal Navy. It's something we're very keen to try and observe and make sure that we call what we're doing exactly what we're doing. And that with a project like the Barracuda rebuild, the rebuild of Barracuda DP-872, which will be ultimately the world's only example of a Barracuda aircraft, we want to make sure that as we work on it, pieces which are restored, we identify and describe as being restored. Other pieces are conserved, original components like this factory original piece which has been reinserted into the build and components which we had to remanufacture or replicate. So it will never be a complete restoration of one single object and aircraft. So with the rebuild of Barracuda DP-872, we want to be sure that we identify that we're using a variety of disciplines, whether it's restoration, conservation, preservation, or remaking of components, and also identifying that we're using that drawing in of components from a variety of sources. Barracuda DP-872 will always be the baseline aircraft that we intend to rebuild. It was the first piece of wreckage recovered with approval from the MOD to bring the wreckage back to the Fleet Air Arm Museum and start a project to create an example of this, this otherwise non-existent aircraft for the collection. However, over 40 years, the museum's also gained approvals officially to recover other crash site wreckage from high ground sites in Great Britain, and also more recently, uh, material from the Solent water from the Barracuda that was identified as part of the National Grid cable laying project in 2019. All of those components are being harvested and brought back into, in many cases, reusable condition that we can add to the project. Other components we can use for patterning and copying where we have to manufacture, but where we can use the original component without cutting new material, we're very keen to add that original Barracuda material to our rebuild. This part of the aircraft is the center section. It's the piece where the cockpit forms. It's where the pilot sits. The pilot would be sitting in here. The engine fits forwards in front of the bulkhead. The observer, the navigator section would be behind this frame and the tail would be another 20 or 30 feet further in that direction when we get to build that. This, component, this part of the, of the section has to be really, really accurate. If you don't get this straight, and very, very accurately jigged and detailed, the whole aircraft will either bend or grow in, in the wrong direction and nothing will really fit beyond this point if you don't get this set absolutely correct. So we spent a lot of time making sure that this area of the aircraft is incredibly well dimensioned and detailed. During that process, we found components like this, which when we discovered them in the skin work, we realized that they are absolutely original from the factory these pencil doodles and markings here, when we exposed the original skin work which was shielding those in, we discovered these markings. They have to have been done at the Bolton and Paul factory during World War II. They haven't been uncovered since that date until we removed the skins. So we've worked really hard, the conservation team have worked incredibly hard to save those pieces in the original paint and markings and condition and put them back into the aircraft, back as they were in that factory installation during World War II. Other parts of the structure here, much of it is original components, either from the mountainside crash sites or scrapyard finds, and some from even off of the seabed at the Solent recovery. These very, very difficult to make tubes, tapered tubes, which we were really struggling to find. We had no way of really um, knowing what we were going to do if we didn't have these tubes which have to be tapered. They're critical dimensions and they have to be tapered. They didn't exist on any of the other component sources that we had, but both of the tubes that we required turned up from the Solent recovery. So these tubes, unbelievably, have been recovered from the seabed after being there for more than 70 years and they're in perfectly good, usable condition. This section here, which has the um, pilot's manual undercarriage winding mechanism, this is an interesting example of how 
a number of original parts, the actual lever and the winder and most of the bracket is original from some of the crash site wreckage sources and one or two small components we've had to manufacture to complete that sub-assembly. So this is a really good example of how we've reclaimed original material, reconstructed it to make the sub-assembly, but we've had to add one or two newly manufactured components to finish it off. At first glance, much of the wreckage recovered from the Solent water of Barracuda recovery would look just like that wreckage or unusable parts, um, but it's very much not the case. Careful cleaning, careful dismantling and harvesting many of the components as we analyze and work through the material, we're able to find numerous pieces which once they've been desalinated, decorroded, treated correctly, um, we can bring them back to completely usable perfect condition almost components. These have been on the seabed for more than 70 years, buried in the black silty mud away from oxygen. has kept them actually preserved better than many of the mountainside crash site components. So for every piece that we're able to salvage like this, not only do we not have to buy the material and the tooling and machine and manufacture those parts, which would then be non-original. These of course are genuine barracuda pieces which can be put back on to the rebuild of DP-872.